Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this oscillating sphere. This tutorial is a recreation of a piece I found on Charlie Deck's Big Blue Boo Tumblr blog. And I want to do this piece because it uses the concept of oscillation to make this very aesthetically pleasing graphics. We're going to start by moving the origin point from the top left corner of the canvas to the middle of the canvas. And we can do that using a translate function and to provide the argument, which is the new origin point. It's going to be width divided by two and height divided by two. All right, and then now I'm going to draw a circle using the ellipse function, which takes in a total of four arguments. The first two are the center of the circle, which now is going to be the middle of the canvas, right? So we can just provide zero comma zero. And then the third and the fourth are the diameter of the circle. So I'm going to actually put R times two and then R times two, and then going to declare the variable R, which is the radius of the circle to be 150. Right now, how about we do no fill as well? All right. Next, we want to draw a sine wave that goes from the left side of the circle to the right side of the circle. So that's going to be a sine wave as a function of angle that ranges from 0 to 360. And we can do that using a for loop that goes from i equals to 0 to i less than 360 to i plus plus. Then because we're using degrees, we need to also change the angle mode to degrees. Now, for the x value, the x value is going to range between the left side to the right side of the circle, which is from negative r to positive r, right? So I'm going to use the map function to map the value of i, which goes from 0 to 360 to negative r and r. And because I want it to include 360, I'm going to also do less than and equals to. Now, before we move forward, how about I print out the value of x? So it ranges from what? Should be negative 150, right? To 150. Perfect. So that's exactly the value of negative r to r. Then now for the y value, it is going to be the sine function, right? And the sine wave function is the amplitude times sine of angle, which is i. And amplitude is the distance between the middle point or the equilibrium to the peak and the valley of the sine wave. So we also need to set amplitude to, how about we set it to r, the radius for now. Then I'm going to also use an ellipse function to draw out all these points from x comma y, and let's give it a size of just one. And as you can see here, using a constant value for the amplitude makes it that the shape of the sine wave goes outside of our circle. And that's not what we want. So we want to calculate the amplitude such that it is still inside the circle. And we can do that by using an equation of a circle. x squared plus y squared equals to r squared. And we need to rearrange it in such a way that y is a function of x and r. So we know that it will never go out of the limit. And that equation is going to be y equals to r times the square root of 1 minus x divided by r squared. And so amplitude will be equals to r times the square root function is sqrt of 1 minus, and it's x divided by r squared. And so we're going to use the function called power, pow, which we need to provide the base and then the power. So it's going to be x divided by r, and the power is 2. All right, so now it is inside the shape of the circle. How about now we move the circle? So I'm going to set a new variable called angle, set it equal to zero, and then just going to add it to our i value here. And we want to increment it by, how about just do one degree at a time. All right. And as you can see here, it's moving to the left, right? 
and you can change the direction easily by just changing the sign here but I'm going to keep it at positive for now all right let's put this code into a class so let's go to this arrow here click the plus sign click create file I'm going to call this file wave.js then now to integrate this into our program just go to index.html and then come to this line of code copy and paste change the name here to the name of your new file this is how we integrate a new javascript file into our program now we're ready to write the wave class so start with the word class let's call it wave and then inside the constructor function let's see what we need we're going to give r as the global variable so we basically just need angle here so just do this dot angle and set it equals to zero then i'm going to write two methods one is display and the other one let's call it move okay and so we just need to copy these set it into display all right and actually the angle here will go into the move function and we also need to make sure that this angle will be this dot angle all right let's try to just create one wave object how about i call it w and w is going to be a new wave object no argument is needed here and then we're going to call the function display all right and then let's call move perfect so now that we have one wave let's create a bunch of waves so instead of just one variable here let's create an array called waves and then how about another variable called num for the number of waves that we want to create inside setup let's create a for loop that goes from i equals to zero to i less than num right and then we're going to create a bunch of new waves object inside this waves array and we're going to call these two methods on all the objects hmm. why do we only see one wave why do you think that is so actually if you go back to wave.js you notice that for all the waves is at the exact same point so we need to give it like a shift of some sort between each of the waves so how about we create a variable called shift set it to a parameter shift and we're going to set this dot shift here so basically inside the sign function i is the value that is between 0 and 360 that makes the original sine wave that you saw right this dot angle is the value of the angle that we used to move the wave and then now the shift is basically shifting the starting point instead of it being at zero for all of them it will be at a different point so what is that shift going to be if we go back here we can see that all of the i value here is different for each of the waves so how about we do i and then let's comment this out for now you can see that it's shifted a little bit out right how about we create a new variable called step let's set it to 10 and we can just multiply that constant to here step right all right and then you can just change the values here the values here as you wish and now how about we move it okay that looks really cool all right the last step that we want to do is actually we want to vary the shift value over time and we can do that by how about we set a new variable called movement let's set it equal to zero for now and inside this sign function here what we want to do is that we want to multiply this shift which is at a different point for each of the wave by this movement but i want this movement to go in and out right we want it to be big we want it to be small i want to set this dot movement to an oscillating 
equation, specifically a simple harmonic equation, which is either sine or cosine, and it outputs a value between negative one and one. So we can set this dot movement to, how about we set it to cosine, and we give an argument of this dot angle. So it will range between negative one and one, and we can just see what these values are. So it goes from one, right? And you can see 10 here because we have 10 waves. And it goes down, 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 all the way to, oh, I stop it too soon. So it goes from one to down to zero, right? And then to negative. one right and then it goes back so it goes back and forth and what kind of shape do we get from this you can see that the shift ranges right between whatever the shift that we provided as the value to zero then it goes back and there's a bunch of things that you can actually change for example this one ranges between negative one and one, and if you don't want it to go to negative, you can just add one here, and now it gives a little bit different movement, which is kind of cool too. So how about now we change the aesthetics of how this looks. So I'm going to first set the stroke to how about white. Also, let's do fill as white as well. And then how about we set the background to black and then I don't want to draw the circle anymore. Then I want to set the number of waves to be 20. All right. Okay. A few more things that I want to tweak just to show you the different variables that we can change. If we go back to wave.js, as you can see right now, we just have one wave which is one period, right, from zero to 360. We can also change that by multiplying what's inside here by a scale. So let's just set that to this dot period. And how about we do this dot period equals to two. So you can see here, now it's two waves, two sine waves, right? So that's cool. And then you can change the increment at which you draw the points too. Right now we draw a total of 361 points. We can do a smaller increment. Gives it a different look. You can change the size of your circle. So I think this one is actually a really fun one to be creating because it actually uses a very basic concept of sine and cosine wave and oscillating motion to create this very beautiful graphics. And you can change the different variables to create a different look that you desire. So give this one a try.